And I wake up in the morning saying, bro, no daddy. And I'm like, oh shit, oh bruh. Uh, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to another. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another episode. Of course, we got the best intros, and we play with you guys because we actually lay in the toilet. So it is, so we didn't actually fall in the toilet, man. But we in the bathroom, guys. You guys know in this bathroom is where we get all the work going. No diddy. We get all the work going on in here. All the magic happens in this bathroom. But today, what I want to do is a little bit different. We got tons of plants hanging right now. Tons of plants drying right now in here, as you guys can see. But I wanted to show you guys my perpetual setup. We got things running in every chamber. So I'm going to show you guys in today's episode and show you guys how easy it is to get a perpetual setup running because all you need is a little bit of extra space. You don't even need a lot of tools and equipment. I know you do need a few things. So I'm going to show you guys how I get mine going. So right now we're in the bathroom, but let's head on over to the seedling area, the germination station, because that's where all the magic starts off, baby. Let's go. Warning, this video is for scientific and educational documentary purposes only. We do not sell anything. A few moments later. Alright y'all, so here we are at the germination station. This is the seedling station, germination station. This is where I start off all my beans. The important thing is that you need to have a few things and that's why this is all here. We start off with the humidity dome. That's really important to maintain humidity. I like having this little light over it because it really also helps me just to manage my light. Now the important thing to note guys, my seedling station, my germination station, it changes a lot depending on how many beans I'm popping. So I like to have things pretty flexible. Sometimes I just pop it on top of a spare tent I got. Sometimes I set things on on top of this table sometimes I set it underneath the table and I just hang the light literally underneath the table like that so there are a lot of different ways you can do it the point is you don't need tons of space to start your seedlings off for the most part you can actually start them off in a humidity dome and in here we got a few different seedlings a few different beans that we've popped and a few of our necessities that we use when it comes to germination so you guys come in and have a look now like I was telling you guys this is the seedling station germination station I like literally setting this light on top of the humidity dome just because it fits so nicely shout out to my homie Colorado Joe the big bro Raymond he actually hooked me up with this light I didn't think I was gonna need it but it came in really nice and handy and now it's become my little germination seedling light so thank you bro but as you guys can see we got tons of different genetics in this seedling dome right here we got the jealousy crossed with nerds robe we've got the gazerpo by Humboldt we've got the rainbow belt that's the cross with the platinum by in-house genetics we've also got the just the OG cross with the platinum and we've got another baby Yoda so we've got quite a few different genetics on here and of course we got some of the genetics we've crossed ourselves we've got the ICANN OG. These two are both ICANN OG seedlings, so I'm looking forward to seeing how these go. We've also got the Grandpa Stash crossed with that French Toast. So if you guys have a name for that, because I'm trying to figure out a name for the Grandpa Stash crossed with that French Toast, if you guys can figure out a name, drop it in the comments. Maybe we'll figure something out and I'm gonna hook someone up with some of these genetics. These are exclusive. These have not been released and they may not never be released, but we'll see, but I can hook you guys up. Now we also got the Milky Ways. This is a brand new strain which I've crossed and this will be released to the ICANN VIP Bean Club homies. So if you guys aren't in the ICANN VIP Bean Club, you're missing out. Now, like I said, this table has everything that I need to get my beans started. It's got my little can of can on the heat mat, uh, all my information. Sometimes I start off with the Aurora Plus. Shout out to the homies over at Root Nerds. Really great people. But there are a lot of different options that you guys can use when it comes to germination. But for me, one thing that's always standard is that Qualtrips germination booster. This stuff bangs. Whether you're starting off in a solo cup, whether you're starting off in a paper towel, just hit yourself some of these Qualtrips germination booster. It'll definitely increase your germination rates and you'll have no issues with lost seedlings, damping off, pathogens, none of that stuff. So definitely give it a try, wipe away your pathogens and protect your seeds. Now we also got the ICANN flower power, we got uh, the veg pack as well, but we also got this little that I like to call trichome viewer, which I usually use to view my trichomes. I've actually hooked some of the homies in the ICANN VIP Bean Club up with these absolutely free too, just to help them out. Now when it comes to starting off seedlings, some of you guys may notice that I've actually been using these rapid rooter cubes. These are actually pretty useful and I got a bag of them. They come in pretty handy. I've been using that because it's also been helping me with the damping off pathogen. I simply don't like to go directly into the medium, so for all of these we actually went into the rapid rooter cube and then we popped that into the solo cup. Now 
Now all these plants in the solar cup are actually really young seedlings, but they're doing pretty well. As you can see, roots are already popping out through the bottom. Same thing over here, we've already got roots popping out. So now again, yo, the important thing about setting up a little germination station or seedling area is just having nice humidity. You want to make sure that you got a little dome. You can have a big dome like this, or you can have one of the slightly smaller ones like this one. Now there are pros and cons because the smaller domes are slightly easier to manage, but the bigger ones can obviously hold a lot more. I can actually pop the smaller dome into the bigger dome and use it like that. So there are a lot of different options when it comes to setting up your seedling area, your germination station. Just make sure you got a humidity dome, a good enough light. It doesn't need to be a super powerful light. That's why you don't need to have them in your veg space, wasting space in your veg tank. Now speaking of veg tank, before we actually get into the veg chamber, we need to show you guys the cloning station because the cloning station is an important part of a perpetual setup. Without popping new beans all the time, you can literally get into cloning and have a perpetual setup and be harvesting every couple weeks. So let's take you guys over to the cloning station show you guys how we do it a few minutes later Alright y'all, so the cloning station is nothing special, it's really simple, and like I tell you guys all the time on this channel, we don't hide anything, I don't hide nothing, I show you guys exactly how it is, uncensored all the time. I'm not one of those YouTubers who go and make preparations behind the scenes, I just pull out my camera and take you guys into the grow room. So, this is the cloning station, it's literally just this, it's sit sitting down on a stool, and it's a Mars Hydro Aero Cloner. Now this Aero Cloner works really great, I've actually made a DIY one myself, literally on about ten dollars worth of materials check that video out if you want to figure it out but this is a nice all-in-one setup because it's got the light up here the light is adjustable you can turn that you can move the light up you can bring it down so that's really convenient but it also has a few settings for veg flower you know you can change the spectrum on the light you guys can see the spectrum has just changed it's changed again back to veg back to flower back to veg so the spectrum changes but also you can set the timer on here so our timer is currently on 16 hours Right, you can also flower in this thing, you can do all types. So this is just a really easy all-in-one system for me, and this is what I've been cloning in. Now, I actually took a few monster crop clones, which is basically taking cuttings from a flowering plant. We've got a plant deep in flower right here. You guys can see this is nothing but bud, literally. But we stuck it in the cloner, and over here we got one which is slightly earlier in flower. This is a slurricane, and we stuck that in too. And as you guys can see under here, we got tons of roots. We got roots on the slurricane, we got roots on all the monster crops, even this one which is really laid on in flower with like straight up bud over top, we've gotten that one to root as well. So we literally got all of them to root. Now some of you eagle eye viewers may be noticing some of that green in the back there, that's actually build up from the moisture. You guys know, light plus water equal moss mildew and this green stuff, and that's literally what we got right here. And again, I don't hide any of this stuff, I'll show you guys exactly how it goes, so just peep this. This is just a little napkin, a paper towel, a piece of toilet paper. And you can literally wipe around the side here and scrape that off. And you can literally wipe around the side of this and sort of wipe away at that. And you guys can see some of that green stuff actually come off. So once we're done with all these cuttings, what I'm going to do is pull out my rubbing alcohol and I'm going to give this an entire wipe down. I'm going to take the whole thing apart, wipe it down, clean it down, because this has been literally running for about maybe more than a month actually. This has been running for almost two months straight right now at this point. So it's just been popping clones in, popping clones out. And that's the important thing when it comes to doing your propagation setup. You need to have a uniform, you need to have a working propagation setup that actually works. So don't mind that moss and stuff like that at all. But what you're looking for is the roots. The roots are working, the roots are working, the cloning system is working, everything is working guys. So there you go guys, there you have it, that's the cloning station, that's all you need, you don't need a whole lot when it comes to your cloning station, and if you're using the proper... And if you're using one of the humidity domes like I just showed you guys from the... And if you're using one of the humidity domes that I just showed you guys that I got in the germination seedling station, you can clone in that. You don't even need to have a separate place. Your germination station can be your cloning area as well. Now after you clone, what do you need to do? You need to get into veg. So let's head into the veg chamber and show you guys. Now the veg chamber is one of my favorite places. We got a double DIY veg chamber. Let's head into it. Yo, and just to show y'all, we don't hide anything. This is the germination station, and look what we got down here. Literally, old seed shells, seedlings that didn't make it, all types of stuff, man. It happens, and we don't hide none of it. 
Now, yo, we in the veg chamber, in the veg station, and this is where we got the double DIY chamber running. We literally got the smaller ladies down here, the smaller girls, literally from seedlings, small plants and veg, stuff like that. And then as we get a little bigger, we pop them up in the slightly bigger space up top. Now, this is my veg cabinet. I love using this veg cabinet because it just works for me. A lot of people have seen this, and I've seen some of you guys incorporate your own types of veg cabinets, and I'm loving seeing it, man. So smash the like for that. It's all about sharing the information and sharing our growth setups you know I don't have the perfect setup but I try to make it work with what I got so let's start off with the lower veg chamber where we literally have things in seedling stage and smaller plants we got a little bit of air oscillation up here with this oscillating fan which is unfortunately stopped moving but we actually just got it moves when it feels but we actually got it just hooked on to this little pole. So if you guys need to figure out a way to stick an oscillating fan in your setup, that may be an option. Now, other than that, we just got a light setup hanging from the ceiling of this cabinet, and they're literally providing everything that these ladies need. Light, air oscillation, and beautiful plants. Now up here, we got a pretty similar setup. We got an oscillating fan up in the corner here, which is not moving right now, but we also got another brand new FCE 1500 light. Shout out to Mars Hydro, because this light, since we put it in this chamber, has been putting in work. The plants don't stay in here much longer. And just to show you guys how much work has been putting in in this chamber, We've been running out of space, guys. We're running out of space. We're running out of space real quick. So we got plants everywhere. And speaking of plants everywhere, when your plants get too close to the light, too stuffed up, too stuffed up in a tent, you get too many issues, it's just root bound. Sometimes you may run into issues and that's where you guys need to grab the I Can Fix It chart. All of the issues that you guys may run into, the main ones, we got them down here, guys. So definitely check them out. Even if you guys are fighting pests, hit that discount code, I Can THC, snag a discount and you won't regret it. Hanging outside your grow room, just like what I'm doing right here. Now in here, like I said, we got a few different ladies and this is where they all hang out right before we flip them into the flower room. Now for me, this veg chamber works great simply because I got two spaces. I got one down below and I got one up top. And like I said, the one down below is slightly smaller. So I start off all my seedlings and they go into veg, early veg down here. And then up here, we got a little bit more space. So up here usually has about three plants about this size or we can fit a ton more if they're about this size. Now these are one gallon pots. They're all pretty small and these are all the Hulk's breakfast. That's another strain that I created. That's that French toast crossed with that Bruce Banner, the original Bruce Banner from Dark Horse Genetics himself. So these are looking real good. I'm really looking forward to getting these going a little bit faster and into flower. But the nerds, but the tongue splasher that we got up here, this one is really nice. And this is in a five gallon pot. Now, as you guys can see, the five gallon pot actually takes up a little bit more space in terms of height and also footprint. So that means I get big. So that means they go to. So that means they grow up to the light just a little bit faster than if they were in a slightly smaller pot. Now, like I said, for me, this veg system works. The veg cabinet works. It always putting in work. But the biggest downfall or the drawback is the ceiling height. I don't got a lot of head space in here. So as you guys can see, this plant is already getting a little bit close to the light. And some of these ones that we had literally up here, we had to take them out because they were getting too close to the light. So for now, they're just going to chill out down here. And that's, what, and that's what happens when your perpetual system is working too dang good. So for me, the veg chamber system works awesome, but it's just that headspace. If you guys got a really tall one, personally, I can even broken this middle part out and made it like a really tall veg chamber, but I liked having the two separate spaces. For me, it worked out great. Now enough about veg, because a lot of people know the flowering is the... Now enough about these girls in veg, because we all know the flower tent is where all the magic happens, all the fun. So let's head on over to the flower tent and show you guys what I got running in the flower tent. Ooh, all right, y'all, so we in the flower tent, and this flower tent is what powers all of my grows, and it's powered itself by the Mars Hydro FC6500. It's a beast of a light, but right now, we only got three plants in the flower tent. You guys know this flower tent's always filled, packed to the brim, but right now, we got the Banoffee Pie. We got one of those. We also got one of the SFV OGs in here looking real nice, and down here, we got one of those Cherry Palomas, which we literally put in the tent last night. Now, some of you guys are probably seeing this down here, saying, yo, man, what the fuck? What are you doing, bro? That is a prescription for bugs, pests, and trouble. And I would have to agree 100%. 
don't do this. Don't let your pants look like that. I mean, don't let your tent look like that. You don't want that to happen, man. That's definitely a, a breeding ground for pests, bugs, and all that type of stuff. I'm sure if we look through here, we might find a fungus gnat or two. But the truth is, guys, this tent is a perpetual flower tent. It's not very often that I only have three plants in here. You guys seen out in the veg chamber right now? We got plants waiting to come in here. There's a line. Hey, wait up! Oh, looks like a long wait to get in. Not for friends of Moe's. Oi, oi! Is your name on the list? Don't you know who I am? It's okay, Cecil. They're VIPs. Cecil is a girl's name. Oh. But the only reason I haven't stuffed the tent out with plants just yet is because we gotta change this light out. So on the new episode, you guys might actually see me upgrade this light to the new Mars Hydro FC6500, but we're also gonna get some UV IR lighting in here as well. So for the next run, I wanna try some UV IR lighting, see how it works out when incorporating it with my existing lighting, because in other systems, I've had it built in. But in this one, I'm gonna be adding it supplemental. So we'll see how that goes. So that's definitely gonna be pretty fun and pretty cool, and I can't wait to see how that turns out. But some of you guys may be asking, yo, Matt, is this your only tent your only flower tent well guys we actually got a few other spaces we got a few other flower tents and that's where we got a few projects running so we can't take you guys in there right now it's top secret but this 4x4 flower tent is usually what i got rammed out the last time you guys seen this tent it literally had eight plants in it so right now it's only got three and we're getting close to harvest for this sfvog it probably needs a couple weeks more maybe three we'll see how it goes we'll check the track homes but let me show you guys exactly what else we got in this tent right here so we already mentioned the light it's important to have a great light in your flowering tent for me i got a nice light and i don't need to blast it at 100 percent simply because it's putting in work now we also got two oscillating fans i got one above the canopy and i try to have one just just about canopy height sometimes below the canopy those fans as well as this tower fan really help to build a lot of the brand strength so you guys can see down here i lollipopped everything so there's no unnecessary leaves growing down here none of those small suckers even though we got a couple right here we can plug both of those off but for the most part it's pretty clean just like this one but what that does is actually help help with some of the air circulation between the branches avoid pests and stuff like that what this fan is doing is actually blowing and causing some resistance on these branches and that in turn causes them to grow nice and strong so air circulation is really important also pests like fungus snack hate air oscillation so really get it down below the canopy and up above the canopy because those fungus gnats like to lay eggs in your medium. So if you have a little bit of air oscillation blowing around the medium, they'll find it hard to fly down there and do their thing. Now other than that, we also got a carbon filter, an exhaust system set up, and that works really great to maintain the smells. Now you guys know, I'm in a rental situation right now, so sometimes managing the smell is really important. And you guys can already see just how dirty this carbon filter sleeve has gotten. I definitely need to clean it. Like, check this out guys, if I shift that, that strap to the side, you guys can see that the little coloration is where the strap was. And all next to it is all of the dirt. So it really needs to clean. But the good thing is that you can actually wash this carbon filter sleeve and it extends the life of your carbon filter a lot. So definitely wash the sleeve if you have it. Run it with the sleeve if you have it. I've seen some homies don't use the sleeve and I'm like, bro, what are you doing? Throw the friggin' sleeve on, bro. So for me, the carbon filter is a really important part of this system. Now, y'all, I'm gonna be real with you guys. That's literally what I got running in my flower tent right now. They're hooked up to a regular simple timer so the lights click on and click off. I also have the fans on a timer so that they don't burn out. But I don't got a lot of fancy stuff in my setup right here. I seen grows with all types of stuff, diagnostics, the pulse pro, Man, fuck all that shit. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I grow for the people, and I know a lot of you guys out there don't got tons, five, six, seven, eight hundred dollars to spend on some of this grow equipment, and you guys are trying to make it on a budget, just like I am. And with a simple setup like this, lights, oscillation, carbon filters, plants, good genetics, you guys will be able to grow some fire. And obviously you can have good genetics, but if you ain't feeding your plants right, you're gonna be in trouble. Bruh. So the ICANN Veg Pack and Flower Power, easy slow release organic fertilizer. Easy, it doesn't take a whole lot. Top dress, mix it directly into the medium, water when the soil goes dry, that's it. You're good to go. Your plants will love it and your flower gonna taste fire. Perfect. Hit that discount code ICANN TAC and try the bundle today. Yo, that's pretty much my flower tent. This is the perpetual flower tent. We got plants in and out of here like it ain't nobody's business. So there's literally no better time to show you guys 
exactly what was going on then right now when we don't got a whole lot. We literally only got three plants in here. But yo, we ain't done yet because the most important part of your whole run gonna be that dry and cure fam. And you guys need to have a dedicated dry area at the very least. You may not be drying flour every single day, but you need to have an area that's dedicated where you can manage that RH, manage the temps, climate control that environment, make sure everything dries properly, because if not, all this hard work from veg seedling all the way to flour is gonna be in vain, bro. It's gonna be in vain. So let's head on over to my drying station where I show you guys where I dry, where I kill, and do some of that other stuff because that's really important too. And it ain't perpetual if you ain't drying right, bro. So let's go. Two hours later. All right, y'all. So y'all know we hanging out in the bathroom. No diddy. When Matt goes into the bathroom, you guys, you know you go see hella dang. You ain't gonna see no other strange stuff. Just dank. We don't do none of that diddy stuff over here, bro. But this bathroom is where I do a lot of my drying. But before we even get into the bathroom, let me show you guys something real special. You guys ever seen Harry Potter with the room of requirement? The the room of requirement. The room of requirement only appears when a person has real need of it and is always equipped for the seeker's needs. So, say you really needed the toy. A room that becomes available just when you need something. I got a tent of requirement. It's a really small tent and I use it for all types of stuff. From germination, seedling, cloning, drying plants, all types of stuff. So this is my tent of requirement. It's literally sitting down right out here. Some of you guys may have actually seen it already because it's got the granny blanket hanging over it. Like if this is a, a little bit of camouflage when anyone comes over, it makes it look like it's not even a tent, but it still is. But down here is where we do all the magic. So we got tons of different stuff that we do in here. You guys may have seen plants hanging in here at some point. You guys may have seen seeds being germinated and cloned in here at some point. But right now we got tons of small plants. We actually got four of them. And what we're doing is gonna run all these. All these in a tiny sea of green setup. So all these plants, we we'll literally have them on 12-12 right now. Literally, 12-12 off the rip. So all these plants are really small, but we're doing a little experiment just to see how they all run 12-12. So they're really small. This is the solo cup for the uh, Global Grow Cup Challenge. This has just been flipped into flower, so that's a solo cup challenge. I'm also doing another solo cup challenge right here just to test myself. This is the SFVOG. We got some nice roots. You guys remember that transplant. And these, oh damn, that fell. Damn. Damn, Danielle. Bruh. And we also got two more SFE OGs in here, which we will be doing just a little bit of a sea green experiment with. Now again, this is the tent of requirements. So whatever I need, I do in this tent, depending on if it's free or not. In here, we got a really small little cheap light that we sort of rigged up ourselves. You know, it's just nothing really special. It's literally hanging with some of these S hooks. And we got a carbon filter set up in here as well. Again, a really small, cheap carbon filter. Now this is what I usually use if I am drying plants in here. I'll kick that on just so that it doesn't smell. But other than that, this tent of requirement is really simple. There you have it. So while sometimes I may dry in that tent of requirement, just cause it's small, nifty, and can do a whole lot if it ain't doing nothing else. Or if I just got too many plants and they can't fit in there, then we come into the bathroom. And in the bathroom is where we got tons of stuff hanging literally all the time. Hanging and drying. And this is a climate controlled bathroom. You guys can see right above my head, right here, we got a little vent. And this vent actually comes in real handy during the warmer temperature seasons, during the cooler temperature seasons, because it connects to the house and you can climate control the entire house. And by default, this room is climate controlled as well. So if you're feeling too warm inside, Kick on the AC, down here gonna get cool. If you're feeling too cold, kick on the warmth, and in here gonna get climate controlled as well. As of right now, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven plants hanging in here. Perfect. So, yeah, I think we're doing pretty good. Where else can you hang seven plants if you ain't got an extra grow tent? Use a spare bathroom. So again, shout out to you guys, man, everyone. We always do DIY stuff on this channel. Try to show you guys stuff because I know a lot of you guys don't have a massive budget, just like I don't. And the truth is, we're always trying to figure out ways to make it work. Who said stoners can't be ingenious and figure shit out? Hit a J, you gonna turn into... Stephen Hawking is my G. <laughs> but yeah guys, the drying and curing is the most important part of it. So you wanna make sure you got a climate control environment where you can hang your flower, hang it up to dry. Inside of this shower is where I got like at least four or five plants right now. And the great thing is they still got a little bit of space around there. I'm not doing a whole lot. Again, this is a tripod, an old camera tripod that I'm hanging up. I'm hanging things up using S hooks. I use a little bit of this uh, tie strap. You know, we're really making things work 
out of not a whole lot. So that's definitely what you guys can take from this video. Take inspiration. If you guys were expecting like some super expensive fancy grow setup showing you guys a grow room tour, I'm just showing you guys how things work for me. A lot of you guys may not have tons of space to get things growing, but if you got a little cabinet and a spare bathroom, you can set that up and have one 4x4 tent and make things happen. Make it happen. So guys, drop it in the comments down below and let me know what you guys think of this. I really enjoyed this episode, showing you guys everything in my setup, all my perpetual stuff, and that's how I run it. For the most part, everything works out nice, really easy and really simple. So drop it in the comments down below and let me know if you guys run perpetual. If you guys do, let me know what kind of setup you guys got. Do you guys got multiple tents, a veg tent, a seedling tent, a propagation tent, all that stuff? Or do you guys just try to DIY it, jerry rig everything like me, just make something out of nothing? Heck, there's no right or wrong way to do it. If you got a fancy ass setup and it works, all the power to you fam, but if you got a simple setup like I do, one 4x4 tent, I literally only got one tent that I flower in for consumption purposes fam, literally. But drop it in the comments down below and let me know. I'm always interested to find out what you guys got to say. And don't forget, join up with the ICANN VIP Bean Club, man. We literally had like hundreds of packages go out recently. Tons of mailboxes are burning down everywhere. So if your mailbox isn't burning down, that means you probably missed out on that Milky Ways drop, fam. Yeah, I hope you didn't miss out on that. And you ultimate VIPs, we got organics heading your way. So guys, join up. We'll see you guys in the next one. Wait, if you guys want to find out more about growing that fire, then definitely check out any episode on screen right now. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace, fam. Thank you.